Good evening. I'm John, and I'm the lead pastor here at Bay Farm Church in Alameda. And I want to thank you for joining us to, uh, for our Good Friday service. Good Friday is the time each year that we stop what we're doing, and we just reflect on what Jesus did for us on the cross some 2,000 years ago. Uh, I want you to put out all the distractions right now from your house and from what you're doing. Uh, turn off the cell phone or, or whatever may bother you in the next half hour, just so you can focus on Jesus. Uh, that's our purpose tonight, and I thank you for joining us in doing that. Let's pray. Dear Father, uh, we are truly thankful for all you've given us. We're especially thankful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, some 2,000 years ago, you sent to the earth to die on the cross for our sins. We're thankful, Lord, that Jesus was obedient even to the death of the cross, that he willingly suffered and died for us, that Jesus uh, purchased our freedom from sin and death. Lord, we thank you for all you've given us. And we thank you that we have a chance tonight to look into your word and reflect on the great gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for joining us tonight. My name is Joseph, and I'm the worship leader here at Bay Farm Church. And we, again, welcome you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're really going to move into this time of worship. We're going to play some songs and really direct them to God tonight. So we thank you for joining us. We put the words on the screen, so hopefully you will sing along and participate if you would like to. And uh, again, this is just a time of kind of being in God's presence, uh, turning our affection towards Him, and also remembering what happened on that day when He went to the cross for our sins. And so we hope that you will join us tonight in worship. Love of Jesus. 
Jesus, you're the king upon the throne. Thank you for the way you always love me. And now I get to love you in a return. Now I get to love you in a
I don't know about you, but uh, I have a lot of scars. And each one of my scars shows a, a painful story in my life. It reminds me of something that I did in a foolish way or something that was done to me uh, by someone else who was foolish. Um, all of my scars uh, are, are just a part of my life and they're stories. Uh, for instance, uh, the scar on my left hand reminds me that I shouldn't have tried to cross a barbed wire fence with my friends in the middle of the night. Um, the scar on my left knee uh, reminds me that I should not have been running around a concrete swimming pool in Florida when I was a kid. Um, the scar uh, on my right shin reminds me uh, that I should not have uh, been walking on an oil rig uh, without watching where I was going. Uh, I uh, have all these different uh, scars. They're reminders of my painful past. Uh, I have a scar over my left uh, eyebrow, uh, which is a reminder that uh, you shouldn't try to show off for your girlfriend. Um, Jolene and I were dating. We went out uh, playing racquetball and uh, I tried to hit the ball off the back of the wall, uh, to send it over my head, back to the front wall to score on her. I thought I was really cool, but I didn't want to break the racket on the back wall. So I hit the ball and jerked up and hit myself in the face. Uh, she laughed till she saw all the blood everywhere. Uh, and I went to get 11 stitches. Um, it's a painful reminder that showing off sometimes um, isn't the best thing to do. Pride comes before the fall. Um, I, I have lots of uh, scars. I have one on my forearm from uh, when I was cutting a, a plant box off uh, with a utility knife and it was getting dark and we were in a hurry and I, I really wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and I literally stabbed myself in the arm uh, and went to the emergency room and of course got more stitches uh, and the doctor thought I was an idiot which I, I was. Uh, I uh, also have two large scars down here from operations and they're painful reminders that I'm not indestructible, that this body is really pretty fragile. Uh, one uh, scar is from when I slid down a, a waterfall in fourth grade and, and, and ruptured uh, something down there and, and I got a hernia and so the doctor had to repair it in surgery. Uh, my other large scar is from uh, when I had an emergency appendectomy when I was 40. Uh, and it's a painful reminder again that, well, this body just keeps falling apart. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is uh, I have lots of scars. Um, of course, the, the scariest, the ugliest, the, the scars that are most painful, the, the ones that remind me of the worst pain uh, are the scars that you don't even get to see. They're scars that are not visible. They're invisible scars. That they're, they're from things that happen to me by other people uh, where my heart has been wounded. And, and you know what I mean. We all have family and friends and, and enemies who have hurt us throughout our lives uh, and, and, and they've wounded us in some way. Uh, and, and because of that, we wear invisible scars inside of us that remind us of our hurt, of our pain, of our brokenness. In reality, uh, everyone on earth <laughs> has some um, visible and invisible scars that tell their life story. We all have scars that show our hurt, how we hurt ourselves, and how others have hurt us also. But tonight, I don't want to just talk about the scars that we have caused ourselves and others. Tonight, I want to tell you about some different scars. Some scars that not only show pain, but scars that show love. 
But to do this, I've got to go back to the beginning, way back to the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis. Genesis chapters 1 and 2 tell us that our creator created us to have a loving relationship with him. God created us to fellowship with him forever, to trade love uh, back and forth for all eternity. But when we get to Genesis chapter 3, we see that Adam and Eve chose to reject God's love to them and pour their love into sin and self. And uh, as you know, uh, since the fall of man, Adam, Adam's foolish choice uh, has cursed all humanity with a sin nature. Uh, and that sin nature inside of us uh, causes us or, or pushes us, pulls us uh, to want to sin against God, to, to love the things of this world instead of loving our loving creator. Uh, our sin nature causes us to sin. Uh, and because of that, it has cursed us to die. As uh, we look in the scriptures, the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. He says, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Uh, in the Greek text, uh, the, the original language that the New Testament was written in, um, uh, it says literally that Adam opened a door or held the door open for death. His sinful nature that he passed to all humanity has caused us to sin and in doing so cursed all of humanity to death. Now, unlike... Uh, our, our other wounds that we receive in life, the wound of sin cannot be healed by medicine or, or over time. Uh, so our loving creator uh, sent his only son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Uh, you see, God knew the only act that could overcome uh, our, our sinful ways. The only thing that could heal us as sinners was Jesus' sacrificial death. Some 600 years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Isaiah wrote how that Jesus would come and heal us by, our, by his wounds. Uh, this is what Isaiah says uh, in Isaiah 53, uh, verses 3 through 9. Isaiah, again, writing 600 years before the birth of Christ, says, He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. Uh, we turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, uh, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid upon Jesus the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep is silent before the shearers. He did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. In an unimaginable act of love, Jesus willingly sacrificed his life. He willingly went to the cross and he suffered and died for us. He healed us by his wounds. The New Testament is, is literally filled with scriptures that, that talk about how uh, Jesus took 
our place on the cross. How Jesus suffered and died uh, for our sins. How the unjust died, or how the just died for the unjust. How uh, Jesus uh, took our sins upon himself and in exchange gave us his godly righteousness. How he uh, was wronged by man and yet he made man right with God. Let me read you just a few of my favorite scriptures uh, in the New Testament that talk about what Jesus did for us. Uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, he says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. I, I, I like what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.21. He says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Uh, Peter writes, uh, Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. And in 1 Peter 2.24, Peter writes, Jesus personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. And then Peter finishes it out in a beautiful way. He says, by his wounds, by Jesus' wounds, you have been healed. The story of Jesus' scars goes back some 2,000 years ago. The Holy Son of God on a dark Friday night was raised up onto a cross so we could be made right with God. Uh, Jesus was wounded on Good Friday, what we call Good Friday, he was wounded, he suffered and died on Good Friday so that we could be made right with God and become good people. Someone said the only uh, people with scars in heaven, the only person with scars in heaven will be Jesus. And that's true because uh, every person uh, who has received Jesus as their personal Savior and has, die, uh, and, and has died and, and went on to heaven, uh, they receive a, a glorified body. They'll, they'll, they'll get a body that is perfect, a spiritual body that is just perfect. There, there's no, uh, there's no si uh, sickness or death in heaven. It, it'll just be a, a, a perfect uh, existence in heaven. But there is one person in heaven uh, who will have... Have scars from earth and that is Jesus the Bible says after Jesus resurrection uh, they, uh, that he showed his disciples the scars from the nails in his hands and feet from his side the, the idea there is that for all eternity when we're in heaven in our perfect bodies our bodies uh, that have been perfected by Christ by his death on the cross. The idea is that throughout all eternity, all eternity, we will look at Jesus and we will see how by his wounds we have been healed. I call them scars of love. Uh, I uh, personally don't have any scars of love on me. All of my scars came from, again, me hurting myself or someone else hurting me. But I want you to know, uh, the scars that Jesus wears today as he sits on the right hand of the Father in heaven, the scars that he wears today, they're scars of love. Sure, they, they remind us of the pain that sinful man caused the Holy Son of God on Good Friday. But I want you to know, the scars that Jesus is showing off today in heaven, they represent more than pain. They represent the love that the Savior had for us. 
the love that he showed us on the first Good Friday. If you're listening to this message and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to know that you should. Because the greatest love that has ever been expressed has been expressed to you. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was raised on the cross. He, he willingly died, suffered and died for you. In fact, I tell people all the time uh, here at Bay Farm Church on Sundays uh, in, in our, our regular worship services, I, I say all the time, I say, if, if you would have been the only person alive, Jesus would have died for you. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares for you. That's how much he wanted to rescue you uh, from your sinfulness, uh, from the sin and the penalty of your sin that was going to send you to hell. Uh, Jesus died because he loves you and his scars prove that. So if you haven't received Jesus as your personal savior, I encourage you to do so. You say, well, Pastor John, I, I don't know how to do that. How, how do I become a Christian? Well, uh, it, I tell people all the time, it's as easy as ABC. A, you have to agree with God you're a sinner. You have to agree with God you're a sinner. B, you have to believe that Jesus is the Savior, the Son of God, who died, was buried, and rose again for your sins. And then C, you have to call upon the Savior for salvation. For the Scripture makes it very plain, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved if you're listening to this message I encourage you I encourage you right now wherever you are I encourage you right now to bow down before Jesus admit your sin before him uh, your need for his uh, saving cry out to the Savior by faith uh, uh, professing that you believe he died, was buried, and rose again for you. Uh, and, and at that, that, that point, call out to Jesus for salvation and trust what the scripture says, that whoever calls upon Jesus will be saved. Well, I want to pray for you right now. Uh, and then I want to lead, uh, in, uh, uh, lead you in a time of communion where we uh, remember how Jesus uh, suffered and died for us to purchase our salvation. Father, I thank you for all you've given us. Again, the greatest gift, of course, was the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for that. Lord, I pray for anyone out there listening to this message. I, I pray, uh, Lord, uh, that if there's someone that hears this message and they haven't received Christ as their Savior, that right now they would take care of business with you. They would bow before Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Son of God's Savior who died for them. They would confess their sin. And Lord, they, they would uh, believe by faith in their head and heart in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and they call upon Jesus for salvation. That's what I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have made a commitment to Jesus Christ tonight, you've trusted him as your Lord and Savior, uh, I just want to encourage you to send us a, a quick email at contact at bayfarmchurch.org. We would love to rejoice with your, your salvation decision, and we'd love to send you some things that'll get you started uh, down the right path on your Christian life. Um, and uh, I, just, uh, I just rejoice with you. Uh, that you've started a new life in Christ. The night the Lord was betrayed, he had dinner with his disciples. We know it as the Last Supper. But actually what Jesus was doing was he was transforming the Passover feast that the Jews celebrated each year uh, into what we call communion. And Jesus was uh, expressing to the uh, forefathers of the church, how that they would use communion uh, to remind them of the crucifixion or, or what Jesus did on the cross for them. Of course, the disciples did not understand any of it. 
They were totally lost. Uh, they really didn't pick up on Jesus' words there at that last supper uh, till after Jesus had, had risen from the dead. Tonight we are going to receive communion. And if you do not have the elements in your house, uh, that's okay. You still can spend this next five minutes just reflecting on the great gift that Jesus uh, gave you some 2,000 years ago on the cross. Uh, communion is done with two elements. Uh, we have some unleavened bread here. And the bread uh, represents the broken body of Jesus or the, how Jesus suffered for us. It's unleavened because it's representing how Jesus' body, his life, was sinless. Um, the bread is not to be uh, enjoyed. It's, again, to represent suffering. Uh, and so as you eat it, uh, it's supposed to be somewhat bitter and dry and to make you thirsty and get caught in your throat and, and really just not be a good experience. Uh, as you eat the bread and you chew on it and you swallow it and it makes you dry and thirsty, I want you to remember or remind yourself of how your life was dry and thirsty before you met Jesus. How uh, that uh, you really needed someone to give you new life. And as you eat it and swallow it, look back if you can. Imagine how Jesus suffered and died for you. And if you need help with this, read John 19. What a great chapter uh, to really uh, focus you in on how Jesus suffered and died uh, on, on a Good Friday for you. And then after you eat the bread... Take a few minutes, just a second or so, and, and, and uh, pray and ask uh, the Lord to just really help you live for him. Thank him for what he's done and, and, and pray that he will help you uh, live the life that he has, has purchased for you. And then take the grape juice and drink it. The beautiful grape juice uh, is to remind you of the sweetness of the blood of Christ. Uh, the Bible says, through his blood, he purchased us. He redeemed us. And as you wash down the bitter suffering uh, with the, the, the juice, it's to remind you of how Jesus bled and died. And that death uh, purchased a new life for you. So I invite you to eat together. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, just bless us, keep us uh, focused, help us to live for you, help us to never forget how your son came and died for us to give us new life. Help us, Lord, help us to love you as you love us in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>
that's what you pray Find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all And all to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He who was did white as snow
Well, I want to thank you for joining us at our Good Friday service, and I hope that this has been special for you. I also hope that you will join us this Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Easter service. We are going to have a great, great time together. Uh, join us at 945 for Cyber Fellowship. Uh, and then uh, from there, we're going to worship. We're going to pray. Uh, we're going to have a, a dynamic message. We're going to celebrate the risen Savior. And so I hope you'll, you'll join us. I invite your friends and your family. Uh, send bayfarmchurch.org uh, link to, to all of your family and friends. Uh, we want to have the biggest Easter that we've ever had at Bay Farm Church. This Sunday, 10 o'clock. See you there.